How's it going, Ram fans? And welcome to the JT Double Take. I'm Jessica Mendoza. And I'm Tara Barrow. Jessica, the CSU softball team got some exciting news this week. Yeah, absolutely. For the first time in over 21 years, the team is ranked in the, co the coaches' top 25 poll. It's really exciting for them. Yeah, and this is the first time since 1998. So this is a huge thing because this is, for people who don't know, with the NCAA 25 coach poll, it's where 32 Division I coaches vote on the top 25 teams. And for CSU to be pit, put in the top 25, that is a very huge accomplishment for them. Absolutely, but I would say they're very well deserving after that really long win streak they had. And you can't forget to mention um, Amber Nelson did get Mountain West Player of the Week this week, so it's really exciting for her. Yeah, absolutely well deserved. She went six for nine this weekend, was a huge, huge key player for the Rams. Absolutely, batting 667 with 7, oh, 729 on base percentage. Well deserved award, absolutely. Definitely. Well, in other news, after the opening round at the 73rd Western Indian Collegiate Tournament, the men's golf team remains in fourth place after scoring three over par. The Rams had a slow start entering the tournament, but were able to find their swings and posted a three over three, 353 to put them in seven shots behind the opening round leader host, San Jose State. The Rams are currently in the last wave of play with Washington. Well, just over three weeks after declaring his transfer from the CSU men's basketball team, guard Anthony Mastin Bonner has found a new home at Missouri State. Mastin Bonner will be joining former coach Jace Hurl, who coached the Rams in the 2017-18 season and is now the assistant coach for the Bears. And even more recently, 6'9 sophomore forward Logan Ryan has also announced his decision to transfer from the program. Ryan totaled 41 rebounds for the Rams this past season and averaged eight minutes per game. Wow, Jessica, another transfer? I know, <laughs> well, we'll definitely have to see how, what the team has in store for us in the fall. <laughs> wow, another, er, but for the second week in a row, the Colorado State track and field team broke the school record for the women's 4x100 relay and smashed with a time of 44.06 of the Doug Max Invitational. Sprinters Mary Beth Sant, Lauren Gale, Destiny Rocker, and Jessica Uzude broke the record by six tenths of a second faster than 44.66 run they had last week. Uzude also placed first in the women's 400 meter dash, giving her a personal best with a time of 53.79. Sant ran a personal best with a time of 11.56 and placed first in the women's 100 meter race and Rocker crossed the line, finish line in the 200 meter race with a clock time of 24.15. And on the men's side of the track, senior Nathan Gish logged the ninth best men's outdoor time of 21.25 at the CSU, winning the men's 200 meter race, topping his previous best of 21.5 at last year's Mountain West Championship Conference. The Rams will hit the road for the several for, will hit the road for the next several meets in Southern California. The competition will begin tomorrow at Azusa Pacific and will continue with the Mount Saint Mount Sac Relay Classic. Well, Tara, while the track and field team will be competing in California this week, so will former CSU wide receiver Preston Williams. Williams will be competing to win over NFL teams in hopes of being picked up in next week's draft. Now, there is some doubt whether Williams will be drafted at all after an off-season misdemeanor charge from 2016. The incident occurred while he was on scholarship at Tennessee. The charge has kept him from participating in the NFL Combine and his numbers from Pro Day, while well, they weren't impressive either. However, Williams himself has never doubted his own potential, even telling CTV reporters at Pro Day that he doesn't think anyone can cover him when asked about NFL cornerbacks. Well, today, Williams is in San Francisco visiting with the 49ers, and on Friday he will travel to East, east to Oakland to meet with the Raiders. The 49ers own the seventh, second overall, 36th, and 67th picks throughout the first three rounds of the 2019 NFL Draft. While the Raiders have five picks in the first three rounds, with three of those being in the first round alone. Former CSU wide receivers coach Alvis Witted, who is now with the Green Bay Packers, has opened the eyes of many to explore the possibility of Williams going to Green Bay. Witted set Williams up in a pro-style passing attack and got to watch from the sidelines as, as Williams burned secondaries with his size and speed. However, Witted has just recently been picked up by the Packers, so the amount of leverage he has with ownership and if he could get Williams onto the roster is in question. Another popular opinion from Ram Nation is the speculation of Williams going to join former Ram Michael Gallup as a Dallas, in Dallas as a Cowboy. 
Both the Packers and the Cowboys are in need of upgrading their wide receivers and some young talent like Williams could certainly ben benefit them. Well, with the NFL draft kicking off next Thursday, we're going to have to wait and see who, if any teams, do press play on Williams tapes. Well, Rams, you know what time it is. Hey Ram fans, so this week we thought we would change up Disruptive Picks and do it a little bit differently this time. So we are joined by Club Baseball Vice President Daniel Torreo. So Daniel, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So Daniel, this week's Disruptive Picks come from Kaylee Wicker, and you may know this, but in the MLB, if a player steps on the field for only one minute of one game, they will get free health insurance from the MLB for their entire life. Did you know that? I did not. So our question this week is, do you think that that same kind of rule should be implemented for the NFL, who's been under a lot of heat lately for all of their concussion um, issues lately? I definitely agree. I think that anyone that steps on that field and suits up in the pads or helmets and is making contact should be able to have you know, health insurance and take care of their bodies because they're risking their bodies for their job. Even if it's just for one, one minute of one, one game? Second. Yeah. One, one millisecond. <laughs> Do you think that should be something that's implemented in every league? I definitely think so. I mean, sports is a high risk, you know, high injury sports. I mean, er, er, all sports are. So I think health insurance should be provided for all of those that are participating in any sport. Well, it was really awesome to have Daniel uh, join us for the disrupted picks this week. But Tara, I don't know if I completely agree with his opinion. Um, I think it's great that the MLB has this rule in place where their retired athletes will get free health um, insurance from the MLB. But um, I don't know if that's something that all sports should have. I definitely think that's something that the NFL should pick up since they've been um, under a lot of heat lately. But I don't know if you should be required to be paid by your league for just swinging a golf club once or swinging a tennis racket once. I think it should be more of those contact sports like football. Yeah, and I, I definitely agree with that. I'm kind of a person who thinks that health insurance is something that everyone should have because it is so important. Everyone needs it. Um, I don't necessarily think that you should have it if you only are step on a field once or mm -hmm. have it within that second. But what's shocking to me is how the MLB has it, but the NFL doesn't have it when the NFL has more um, deaths from the game, from it being so contact or being such a contact sport, from all the CT and all the head injury and all the more repercussions that you get from the long term run in football, so that it is shocking to me that MLB has it. And I mean, the retiring age for football is the average is 35, and for baseball, it's around 38, 40. So it's pretty up there. I mean, Ichiro just retired; he's 45 years old. Yeah. So it's just shocking to me, honestly. Yeah, I know a lot of retired NFL athletes feel very disrespected and. They don't feel like they're being taken care of by the NFL after all of the work that their body has been through from being in the NFL. Um, I think this would be a great thing for them to pick up, but you know how we talked about eSports being a sport coming up. What if you know you get health insurance from the eSports from just playing one tournament? I mean, <laughs> I think there's got to be a line, but definitely something I think that um, the NFL should pick up. Yeah, and I mean, I definitely see where the, base, where the MLB is coming from because I, as a college softball player, I play softball, I totally understand the repercussions in softball especially. I had multiple concussions when I played um, throughout my entire life in it, so I get it. It's definitely needed, but I do see where some of the arguments are coming in saying that why does the MLB have it in all the other leagues? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Tara, for your opinion, and thank you also to Daniel for his opinion. And Ram fans, that is all we have for you tonight, but to stay updated on sports throughout the week, be sure to follow us on Twitter at sports underscore CTV. I'm Jessica Mendoza. And I'm Tara Barrio. But don't go anywhere just yet, Rams, because coming up next is Justin Ruiz has all you need to know in entertainment. Stay tuned.